Welcome to Champions of Care, presented by Oakwood Healthcare. My name is Mary Zatina, and today we're going to talk all about joint pain, and specifically shoulder pain. About 30% of adults have joint pain, and some of the most painful and complicated to treat is shoulder pain. With us today to talk about that is Dr. Richard Gruss, a primary care family medicine mm -hmm. physician in Garden City. Welcome to Champions of Care. Thank you for having me. So tell me, when someone comes into your office and they're talking about joint pain, what do you do? Well, just like anything, uh, you get a very good history. What happened? How long has this been bothering you? And what can we do to fix it? And is there something particularly special about shoulder pain? Um, well, it's very common. Uh, it has a number of different causes, uh, mostly related to activity, uh, whether it's work, uh, sports injuries, uh, old injuries, and repetitive use injuries, uh, which can lead into arthritis. Uh, they usually fall into uh, your common tendonitis, uh, bursitis, uh, and your rotator cuff syndromes. And um, if a patient is feeling shoulder pain, they should come see you. Are there any conditions that should send a patient with shoulder pain directly to the ER? Well, most things can be handled by the primary care physician, but anytime there's a sudden trauma, a sudden loss of function, or uh, if you injure yourself and the pain is just so unbearable that over-the-counter uh, ibuprofen or Tylenol isn't cutting it, well, then maybe it's time to take a trip to the ER. And for those folks who are coming to see you and you've talked to them, when do you know it's time to see a specialist? Well, usually I can handle most of the things that come in. Uh, we'll put them on a course of um, non steroidal anti inflammatories, for instance, like I mentioned before, ibuprofen or Tylenol. We'll put them through ice therapy, um, strength training. Uh, in more severe cases, we can even do joint injections or tendon sheath injections to try to alleviate the pain. And obviously, physical therapy is key to rehabbing any shoulder injury. But if those things fail, or if I ever feel that surgery is warranted with a moderate to severe rotator cuff injury, for instance, and then it's time to go see the orthopedic surgeon. Well, let's learn a little bit more about specialty care for shoulder pain. Champions of Care reporter Paula Rivera Kerr is visiting with one of your colleagues, Dr. Mark Milia, who's a shoulder expert. Let's watch. Our guest today is Dr. Mark Milia, an orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine specialist. He was named one of Our Detroit's magazine's top docs. He's mom approved by Metro Parent Magazine. And for all of you college football fans out there, he's also a former offensive lineman for the University of Michigan football program and went to the Rose Bowl three times. Welcome to the show, doctor. Thanks for having me, Paul. Anytime. Clearly your qualifications speak for themselves. Talk a little bit about your past and what brought you to this point today. Uh, it's funny, I had an extensive um, background in sports medicine as an athlete and uh, I was lucky enough to play at U of M and ironically all the darn injuries I sustained playing uh, football got me into the training room and got to know some of the medical staff while I was there. Before we go too much into your sports medicine practice today, let's talk a little bit about your time at University of Michigan. Uh, it was really an exciting time. Bo Schembechler recruited me, brought me to Michigan, and then I finished mm -hmm. my career for Gary Moeller. I think I played with probably 10 or, 10 or 12 guys who played in the NFL for many years. And so for me to be able to continue to be involved in sports medicine and, and be around athletes and take care of athletes has been really a thrill for me. And uh, I still enjoy going to the games on Saturdays with my little boy. I want to talk a little bit about what you're doing currently. So tell me, you know, what type of patients come to see you for shoulder issues? Well, it's interesting. I, my training and my background is in sports medicine, but in reality, anyone between the age of 14 and 85 come to see me for various injuries. Mm -hmm. What about the shoulder? I know you, you have the shoulder a is shoulder a, specialty. The shoulder is a very interesting aspect uh, of our anatomy, too. It's prone to a different kind of injury. The shoulder injuries that we see in patients are more from overuse. Mm. So the athletic injuries that we see are from traumatic injuries. So if an athlete dislocates their shoulder, if the ball pops out of the socket, they will rip certain mm -hmm. structures in the shoulder and have resi resi um, persistent instability. Versus somebody who uses their shoulder for overhead activities such as throwing repetitively over the years okay. or doing overhead work such as working on the line in an, um, in an automotive setting they can rip through their rotator cuff just mm -hmm. without even an injury specifically. Hmm. The way our shoulders put together is that 
the wing blade joins the, the ball and socket deep inside. So the wing blade is the anchor for the rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. The rotator cuff is actually a group of four muscles okay. that form a tendon or a cuff around the humerus bone, which is right here. This bone above the rotator cuff is called the acromion bone. From the use of repetitive overhead work, that bone will wear a hole through the tendon, so people actually rip through the tendon. The problem with the rotator cuff tear is that tendon will continue to rub inside the, sh the shoulder socket, mm -hmm. cause pain, inflammation, and disability. So that's the number one thing that we fix in the shoulder and is a rotator you, cuff tear. what do you do to fix it? How do you fix something like that? <clears throat> well, about eight years ago, we used to open the whole shoulder up. We'd have to cut through all the muscles and skin up top and get down to the shoulder and sew it back together. For about the last seven years, I've been doing it through an arthroscopic procedure, five or six mm -hmm. millimeter incisions, poke holes to get access, a camera that we use to look at the rotator cuff gives us the ability to stitch it back together without making a major open so shoulder surgery procedure. And so that has uh, diminished in the amount of uh, time people are off of work, how long mm -hmm. they have to take pain medicine. And it's really been a pretty good uh, opportunity for orthopedic surgeons to help people with shoulder problems. So people who experience shoulder injuries, it, sometimes they don't even know they're injured. So what should people look out for if they're gardening or if they're doing something around the house or light athletics? What kind of things should, would you recommend that they need to go see a doctor for? Well, the, the interesting thing about the shoulder is that a lot of people who come to see me tell me they've been told they've had arthritis their whole life. Mm. So-and-so said, ah, it's just arthritis. Well, arthritis in the shoulder is not that common. It's really usually a rotator cuff problem. Mm. And so if it's hurting you at night where you can't sleep, if you no longer can raise your arm up above your head, you've got a problem. And the problem with neglecting a rotator cuff tear is they get bigger. Mm -hmm. And the bigger a rotator cuff tear gets, the harder it is to fix it. And so rather than pushing it off and pushing it off, it's not mm -hmm. a bad idea to see somebody who specializes in the shoulder and can kind of help direct the right course mm -hmm. of action. Just because I'm a sur surgeon does not mean I tell every person that right. walks in the door they need surgery. And so I like to try and stress uh, the non-operative options that are mm -hmm. available to anybody. And if those don't work, then surgery is certainly an option. Mm -hmm. But I would not be afraid to see somebody because you think you're going to have surgery. Right. There's a lot of options other than surgery, and we try and emphasize that. Excellent. Well, we covered a lot today, Dr. Millia. Your interesting past at U of M, your practice today. Is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, I would just like to say that uh, we've been doing everything we can over the last few years to create a team effort at Oakwood, and I'm very proud to be a part of the sports medicine program. Uh, Mr. Jeff Klein, who's an athletic trainer, helped me make this program work over the last seven years, and all the athletic trainers that helped me out have been fantastic, and will continue to tr try and stress uh, excellent outcomes on both the athletic field and in the uh, working arena. Well, Dr. Melia, thank you so much for being with us today and for sharing your stories it's a pleasure. with us, and I wish you the best. Thanks for having me. Dr. Gruz, do you have advice for keeping our shoulders healthy in the first place? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's a very good question. Um, prevention is the key to any joint uh, problem, and uh, a good regimen of daily stretching, uh, maybe three times a week of strength training go a long way in preventing uh, shoulder pain from happening to you. So if we can keep them healthy from the beginning, that's the very best thing. And sometimes, as you've mentioned, physical therapy can help get a painful shoulder back to normal. When we come back, we're going to be talking with a physical therapist about how to recover from shoulder injuries. But Dr. Richard Gruz, you're a family practice physician in Garden City. I want to thank you so much for being here. You seem like a, a great guy, and patients can find you at oakwood.org if they're looking for a new primary care physician. Thank you. Thank you.